Um, it's great to be here. I think just a, a couple you know, intro statements and a little bit about myself. Um, I'm from Newport Beach, so the saying goes, right, born on third base and thought I hit a triple. Um, but you know, I think the important thing there is you know, growing up in this area and starting our first internet tech company in 1994, right out of school, um, there was nothing in this area. This was a real estate dominated area. And yes, the only time we knew about technology was sneaking into the Ford Aerospace Planet, if anybody knows where that is, and we would race our cars around and have the security guards come chase us. So that was the, the technology connection we had in this area way back then. Um, but this has always been a very vibrant neighborhood. Um, biotech and some you know, different derivatives of technology companies have been here. So when my brother and I started AdForce in 1994, one of the first ad tech companies, um, it was amazing the community involvement to really get behind us, right? Nobody's ever heard of VC and Sand Hill Road and Menlo Park back then. So I just want to acknowledge people who uh, put this on today, Sanan, Craig Atkins, you guys are going to hear from Palmer Lucky, people who are really investing in this community, which I do think there's a lot of thought leaders um, and a lot of tech leaders now, so very thankful about that. Um, I have to acknowledge about 20% of my staff are Israeli. Um, we have a very large development office um, in Tel Aviv. So obviously have to acknowledge um, the, there's just the tears and the atrocities and the horrors that are happening over there. Whatever side or opinion you have, um, there's a lot of innocent civilians. We have employees there, they have families, they have friends, and, and we pray for them, and uh, we hope we somehow can get through this without this war escalating. So that's my little story. So our company, um, we started in 2014, um, really just set out to build an enterprise AI platform. And in 2014, people were like, what is that? Trust me, it took us a while to figure out what that was too. Um, but the, and to acknowledge some people and how pivotal, how small this industry really is, is you guys heard from Greg Ashlock from iHeartRadio. Okay? I've been in the ad tech business for a long time. Um, let's just say we got really good at serving the banner ad, which everybody loved, all the way to the transition to the mobile phone. Search, we powered Netscape's websites and their, and their search functionality. And ultimately, we work with the precursor of Google, goto.com. So we've been in the business of serving ads for a very long time. Because of that, we became experts on data, right? When you serve an ad, I have to ingest millions and billions of data points in near real time. I have to decide what's the right ad in the right format to deliver to you at the right time. If you just take that problem set, we're talking about almost a trillion dollar industry, right, in media and advertising, and that, that yes, technologies change, but, but ultimately, we, again, we're trying, we heard on the stage today, is fundamentally is I'm trying to engage the end audience in any modality possible. Greg Ashlock was talking a lot about audio. So I'm going to fast forward through my career, you know, and we have got my staff here. I have my cousin actually who heads up Google Analytics, so you can pick his brain over there if you want to learn about that. Um, but ultimately, Baritone's founding, the, bar the root of the word is very truth, tone, signal, truth in the signal. And our vision was, and this game, it came from our pedigree in advertising, was this world is changing. As I go from the desktop to the mobile phone and I'm watching a video, and what's the, the Google response is like, where am I going to serve all the ads? Where are we going to serve all the ads if there's no screen real estate anymore? We, um, in, 19, in 2008, through the founding of Veritone, um, we became obsessed with a new form of advertising. Many of us have been experiencing, it's actually the original form of advertising, which is product placement and native-based ads. So this is when you're watching a movie by Michael Bay and you see the, the cars drive through and every car is a Chevy car, right? Or you're watching The Office, right? And somebody's got the laptop open and you see the logo there. Or more right in your face, iHeartRadio, there is a radio host, Rush Limbaugh, who's talking about LifeLock and, and he weaves it into a story about his trip to Mexico. So like all things, Veritone didn't start, it's, it's gone through different paths, but how Veritone started from day one was trying to solve this one simple, albeit complex, problem. I want to know when Rush Limbaugh is organically talking about LifeLock in his live broadcast. This is not a commercial break, right, where there's metadata that I could say, this is an ad and this is the audience size from Nielsen at the time that ad aired. I want to organically listen to every single radio station, thousands of them are in audio streams, and be able to identify at that second it, was that an ad or not, organically, if that makes sense? This is 2012 when this idea came around. And so when we um, tried to figure out 
uh, you know, obviously we did have exposure to neural networks and, and I'd say crude early derivatives of, of cognitive AI. But we simply said, well, what if I could ingest these thousands of streams in near real time, index them using automated speech recognition, and put it into a time correlated format fast? Meaning, take Rush's speech, right, turn it into text, time correlate it, and then be able to identify very quickly was this a conversation good or bad, positive or negative about which such brand? In this instance, it's LifeLock. That was the problem set, right? It took a lot of work to try to make that a reality. We, 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 there were some crude AI models, if you guys know Nuance, there was only a few kind of automated speech recognitions. There was no cloud APIs yet, right? Um, and so we went up to Redmond and we met with um, Microsoft who was working on a project in their labs division it's called Indexer, for those who remember it way back when. And this was, and so we, we found a platform and a partner to say, A, I can ingest all that content, B, I can index it quickly. And the problem was when we got the results back, it was garbage. So the accuracy, we heard about precision, was very poor. Our breakthrough, which ultimately turned into why we started the company, Veritone, was we made an assumption that there was going to be an explosion of people developing AI-based models, like thousands of them, millions of them. Ultimately, we're going to be in a situation where the AI itself is creating new models as we're experiencing today. So Veritone's vision was to build a platform that could not just um, onboard or, or host one single AI model, but a million models in theory. So meaning, if a job is presented to us with a lot of data, one model does not fit all. Right? So for example, in the context of audio, some of these models are very good at finding proper nouns and phrases, and other models are very good at a general accuracy of the overall transcript. Okay? Both roughly the same category of AI, but radical different performance. All right? So the vision was companies should, should not be an enterprise's responsibility to have to warehouse this and be literally turn your company into, I'm selling something, to becoming an AI expert on every model over the next 20 years. Thankfully, we bet correctly, right? So um, there are, our platform is called AIware. AIware it, today services about 4,700 enterprises. Uh, we started in media and entertainment. We have hundreds of movie studios, broadcasters. iHeartMedia has been a great partner. We actually ingest and organize all of iHeartMedia's linear streams. And they use that output of that for a multitude of reasons. Proving do ads work, do they not work, finding what type of programming works and what doesn't work, all right? So the other major division, after we launched this, um, and I'll just tell a fun story, and I'm gonna pass the presentation because I hate presentations and I just like to talk. So, um, but I'll pass it around. I wanna show you some fun videos. Um, but one of, the, a cool, one of the coolest stories, and it was like our little cloak and dagger was, we're, we're launching this, we're working with all these media and entertainment customers. We became known as the experts in ingesting large scale audio and video and indexing it very quickly, leveraging AI, right? That's ultimately, Veritone has become kind of the definitive leader in that broad category. And like a movie, we got this weird, mysterious invitation to meet with this government agency, right, that wanted to talk about our technologies. It's not classified, so we can go through this, at least in this area. And it was called DARPA, for those who know, right? So DARPA, right, is the Defense's Advanced Research Projects Division. And they wanted to come in and say, hey, we've seen what you've done in audio and video and for meeting entertainment. What about applying this to satellite imagery or the Bureau of Prisons, right? Can I start to index? There's, we are creating so much content as a society, right? Audio and video and other forms of unstructured data that is impossible for us for, to have humans go through and organize and, and understand all this content. Um, so about several years ago, we said, great, we're going to transition not just from servicing media entertainment customers, but now we have a large practice in the public sector and government. So you're gonna hear from Don, uh, Sheriff Barnes later um, about how they're gonna be using AI in, in the workforce. We have several hundred police agencies uh, that are clients of Veritone um, that, that spans from us ingesting all the body cameras and dash cams in, in the, uh, in, so in, in whether it's in, in context of somebody stopping somebody on the side of the road or in the context of an investigation where we've applied that same technology stack to these other verticals where they're now producing tons of audio and video and other un uh, unstructured data. So you're gonna hear about the, the side of our business um, from others who are leveraging AI, again, in law enforcement, and hopefully people can watch um, Palmer Lucky speak tonight about what he's doing at the DOD with exciting Lattice and some of his technologies. 
But I'm going to shift back to uh, media and entertainment and what we're doing at scale with some of the largest movie studios today. Um, CAA, the largest talent agency, is a, is a customer of ours. And, and this is a very exciting, very, this is the zeitgeist of Hollywood at our time. We have, we have, we have big strikes going on, right? The Writers Guild just thankfully came to conclusion and sort of resolved their strike. We are still dealing with the Screen Actors Guild strike. The point I bring up is one of the main pillars of contention in those negotiations is the use of AI, right? It's the deep fake, it's the, it's the issue of our time, and, it's, and, it, and it's, it's something that obviously I'm trying to make money out of this side, but it's a tool that, it, again, we're dealing also with the misappropriation of these tools, right, that could be a problem. All right, I got 10 minutes. So we're gonna watch a quick video, and then I'm gonna go through it. We are living through a period in history when journalism again faces great responsibilities and unexpected challenges. Weather tonight is mainly clear and a low of 49 degrees. Tomorrow for St. Patrick's Day, 54 degrees and sunny at 6 a.m. in time for the Ellen K. Show. Ross Tucker hosting the Even Money podcast for DraftKings, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Hey, it's Steve Harvey. Chances are you probably in your car on the road right now which means at some point you're going to have to fill up that gas tank. I am Ben Scully, the legendary voice of the Los Angeles Dodgers from 1963 through 2010. All right, so it's exciting. I mean, we're living in these crazy times. Everything you saw was completely AI driven, right? So all those voices, so I, I, we, ch we chose, hopefully people understand who those personalities are. So you have some context to what they sound like, right? Um, but how we sort of fit in this equation is, let's go back to our two, I'm gonna give you two example customers. Um, let's go in context, iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio has a huge audience. They invest a ton of money into their influencers, right? Whether it's Ellen Kay, who's actually a client of iHeart, she's a prominent host. Um, or it's one of their new podcasters. They have limitations, right, at scale of how do they get more audience? How do they get more use of this investment in these talents? What you're seeing up here is an example where, as, as Greg went through, it is inconceivable at times or it's not efficient to have all that talent come back into the studio every time to cut a new commercial spot, right? You're now seeing it in movies, right? If you, the, the, if whoever has seen the new Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first 45 minutes, is literally an AI-driven derivative of Harrison Ford, right? It's, it's incredible. The bet, he's still getting paid, to be clear, but now the studios and the editors have a new tool that with permission and governance, that they don't have to get Tom Hanks to come back from vacation after they've done shooting. With his permission and with his agent, they can recut stuff completely, not just with his voice, but now with his face, okay? Every production, that I believe going in the future is gonna have a digital human writer, which means it's gonna have governance on what you can and cannot do with the digital derivatives of it, right? So hence why we're working with CAA, the largest talent agency, to build, in effect, digital lockers, right, that's gonna help manage all of the proprietary training data and their proprietary AI models for these, these, these individuals. So Veritone, um, again, it has a very big presence um, and a large client base in media and entertainment to help movies, movie studios, ESPNs, the iHearts of the world. So they don't have to spend all their time trying to research, organize, onboard, and manage all of these AI capabilities. That's our job, right? So they invest in Veritone, they invest in AIware, and we become, in effect, their AI operating system. It doesn't matter whether they want to run it on Azure or Google Cloud or um, AWS. We're agnostic, and so think of us as now the enterprise operating system partner and infrastructure layer for AI for all these customers. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we, we were kind of you know, fit in many different categories, but again, media and entertainment and government and uh, state and local law enforcement are two big areas of us. Um, our AI really, and I have to try to explain this and how it works for different media and entertainment customers, is it, we really have applied this technology and this infrastructure to help media and er entertainment customers really focus on like four key areas. Creating content, right? There's a utility aspect of this, but there's also now with generative AI, large language models, which by the way, we're not minimizing it, but we view that as just another big category of AI type of technology, right? Again, 
is not, it's not conceivable for iHeart to, have, to go hire and become experts on everything that's happening in AI. If we did nothing but research right, the new innovations or announcements that's happening with just large language model and transformer models, we would have no time to do anything else. Right? Imagine if you're a business trying to sell something. Right? That's our job. Our job is, in effect, your AI wilderness guide. So help create, manage the content, monetize, right? Ultimately, guys, we have to help make these media and entertainment customers make more money. And then lastly, we are part of that innovation curve, right? We work intimately with our larger customers. We're part in that room at the C-suite level. We're helping them understand what do they need to do to adopt these technologies and, and advance their businesses. Um, this is our platform. I'm not gonna go into it in detail. We've been spending over, obviously, a decade, you know, rewriting this thing over and over again. Um, but the, the key pillars here are, we're really good at ingesting really any form of data. That could be, again, we actually ingest and index over 200,000 hours, media hours of content every single day, right? Across, around the world. We ingest the content, we create this intelligent data lake, meaning the AI is you know, interrogating it, acting upon it, creating structure around it. And then we have a whole framework to allow it to turn into workflows and applications, meaning, some use cases, iHeart is saying, I want to know if this organic ad is working, right, when Rush is speaking about something. In other instances, they want to know, they want to be a, do a correlation saying, guys, we're, we're seeing a correlation between this host is, when they're on screen, the ratings are going down, right? And they can now look at that and, because we're tracking when faces are on screen in real time, and now they can actually do the correlation against audience ratings, and they can make decisions on that. So think about it as once we've created this index of all this content applying the AI to it, then it opens up all these different use cases, right? The key for us is we want to make it easy for the different departments to leverage and apply these new use cases cost effectively without having not to, to build a new technology uh, stack every single time. Categories. We are agnostic to the AI type of models. We do have data scientists in house. We, in almost every category of cognition, whether it's image, voice, or large language models, we do have our own scientists that actually build and train our own models, but we are agnostic. Um, we had to be because when we went into the government space, they show up with their own models, right? We're not even allowed to understand how some of these models function. So part of our having to retool our framework was to be able to onboard and manage third-party models as well. So if you're showing up and you want to use Amazon recognition or you want to use Veritone's proprietary ACR models, automatic character recognition, both of those are, are sort of uh, supporting our platform. All right, let's just... Talk a little bit of, you know, of what we're really dealing with today. Um, generative AI is an incredibly exciting part, voice cloning and avatar. Quickly go through this, I'm gonna share the presentation. But let's take, let's take uh, another example, the Masters Golf Tournament, right? Big customer of ours, um, we, help, we help ingest all of their camera feeds, not just the stuff that you see on television, but uh, we'll call it the, you know, the dead air video, right? Every second that there's, those cameras are capturing content, we ingest, we help organize it. And, and when I say organize it, we're running like every form of cognition against it. What faces are on screen, what's in the background, did a Anheuser-Busch logo, um, logo, logo show up in the background, every word that's spoken. So we create, we create this rich, rich index. Historically, the value that we are bringing to the table is them getting intelligence from the content, right? What to, what, what's going on with our content? How do I organize it? How do I package it and ship it out to social media fast? With generative AI, turns out, we have the data lake already. We are the training data now. So if they wanted to do derivative storylines, so for example, I want using an LLM, write me a 500 word narrative about Nike's involvement with the masters in 500 words or less. So again, that's the prompts I put into it. Write me a narrative, right, about Nike's involvement with the masters in 500 words or less. What comes out is not just the beautiful written, to you talk about, and they are impressive. I'm blown away by these LLMs. Um, not only is it a well-written narrative about that, that relationship between Nike and the Masters, but because that, that output is indexed against the data that we already have for them, I can create a real-time compilation video. So, it's, so what would usually take an editor bay hours or weeks to sift through and build this, it's literally one prompt and boom. I've just created an original new vi like video with a voiceover, synthetic voice, on a brand new piece of content. So you're seeing a huge, huge adoption for media and entertainment customers who are being able to build and extend and make more, frankly, money or expand their audience because of these technologies. Um, 
just some fun stuff. I'll show you examples. And, and, but Warner Brothers is a big customer. Um, you know, they, they, they've been a, um, a sort of an indexing customer of ours for a long time, leveraging AI. Um, but now with generative AI, they're helping fill in gaps, right? They're trying to organize all of this stuff. And they're actually using generative AI to, com to complete or slightly change storylines. It's, it's really in incredible. We don't even know all the use cases anymore. We used to, right? But now we're finding out that this is becoming proprietary. And, tr and trust me, I'm trying to sell to another studio and I want to know all the use cases that Warner Brothers is using it. But that's what we're finding out now, they're, that they're actually running with these technologies because we've made it scalable, we've made it cost effective for them to go iterate on these new concepts and ideas. Um, Veritone Voice is just so much fun, right? So it's, it's a lot of responsibility. We don't make voices unless we have verbal and written approval from the original talent. You're going to say, well, wait a minute, Walter Cronkite, we're working with his estate. Right, and CBS. So we, so we are part of the community where we are fully committed right, to, I'll say, the integrity of the IP of the AI models. I'm out of time. I'm going to show you one little example, just fun. Um, so we, we were approached by um, Cameo, who does like, a lot of shout outs and call out and say, hey, I want this celebrity to sing a video to my kids. Um, we ha they approached us, and they wanted to launch a whole new category for using synthetic voices to have your kids' favorite characters now start to be able to do you know, you know, you know, you know, personal grams to you. Obviously, they're not going to get the real actor to be able to do that for every single person. So we created proprietary AI models. We're rolling out with a bunch of big names. So you're, you're going to start to see um, a multitude. And by the way, we're just the tech enabler of this powering, cam uh, powering uh, Cameo who's doing this. But it's, it's really, really cool. Probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life was trying to convince the uh, creative director for Coco Melon. If you guys don't know who Coco Melon is, it's literally the number one children's show by 10 times in the world. Okay? It's I'm not a big fan, but it's huge. Trying to convince them that this voice is good enough to go over the air was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do to convince me of tech. I, I finally lost it and said, you know what? We're doing a Pepsi Coke test. I'm done. I'm done. And so I did a blind test, right? I gave them, they didn't know which clip was real or not. Which one won? The synthetic voice won. All right, so let me just show you this and we'll break. Hey, Combo Crew, it's me, Combo Panda from Ryan's World. I'm taking a break from my favorite video game to send messages to your friends and family on Cameo. If it's a birthday, wishing congratulations for a job well done, or something awesome, I want to help. Is it someone's birthday, or did you get a new top score? Request... So let's, don't minimize the simplicity, right? This thing makes actually millions of dollars, right? So, it's, but, but doing it at scale. Avatars, I don't have time, I'm over time, but again, it's, a, it's an exciting op, op, you know, opportunity. Happy to talk, I have a few reps from Veritone. I'm gonna be here for, you know, for the rest of the day, and uh, I'm sorry I went over the time.